So unlike what most people think, this is actually the largest muscle group on your upper body in terms of total volume. I also think it's the most important muscle for giving you that strong aesthetic look. And those are my top recommended movements when it comes to building it. What's up guys, Sean Nalawani, realscienceathletics.com. The question for today's video is this, do you know what the largest muscle group on your upper body actually is? Because probably 99 out of 100 people or more get this question wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the correct answer and I'll also give you a few important tips when it comes to training this particular muscle for the very best results. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay in the loop on all of my future videos and let's jump into it. Now, yes, if you took all the individual muscles of your back and you lumped them all together, that technically would be the largest muscle on your upper body. But it's important to understand that the back itself is not one muscle and it shouldn't be thought of that way. It's actually a collection of many different muscles with different functions. Uh, we don't call this area the front and so treating the back as being one muscle group, that's not accurate either. You've got the lats, the traps, the spinal erectors, all fairly large muscles on their own. There's the rhomboids, the teres groups as well, but none of these muscles individually are the largest muscle on the upper body. So if it's not the back, then obviously it must be the chest, right? Well, no, like I've said before, most people in the gym overemphasize the importance of chest training. Uh, not to say that building a big chest isn't still an important part of building an impressive physique. Obviously it is, but a lot of people just go totally overboard with this and they perform a disproportionate amount of volume for their chest, thinking that that's the one big key to looking jacked, when in fact, the chest is not as big of a muscle as most people think. Uh, in reality, depending on what source you look at, some studies even rank the triceps as carrying more total mass than the pecs, which is something that most people would never think. So what is the largest upper body muscle? I'm assuming you've probably guessed it by now, and that is the deltoids. Yes, the shoulders are on average the largest muscle group on the upper body. And I'll reference a great article on this by Menno Henselmans, who many of you are probably familiar with, where his research team uh, reviewed all of the relevant studies looking at the subject of muscle volume, and they found that on average, the delts contain 30% more total muscle mass than the pecs, 35% more mass than the lats, traps, and triceps, and they're more than three times bigger than the biceps, which are by far the smallest major muscle group on your entire body, which is just further evidence of the fact that all these fitness YouTubers uploading a million different top secret biceps exercises and talking as if it's some critical muscle group that needs to be trained from a million different unique angles, they're really just talking nonsense. Um, and as a side note here, the largest muscle group on your entire body in general by far is the quadriceps. It's not the glutes like most people commonly think. But getting back to the point, not only are the delts the biggest upper body muscle, but in my opinion, they're also the most important muscle for giving your body that strong muscular look, your upper body that is. Um, not only do they make you appear wider, but the more developed they are, the more they're gonna create the appearance of a smaller waistline, and that's gonna help to accentuate that V tapered look that most guys are after. So it's really just a key area to build up in terms of overall physique aesthetics. Now, what are some practical recommendations that I would give based on this? Well, first off, unless you're a more advanced trainee and you're chest is a specific lagging weak point, then we really need to do away with this whole chest training obsession that so many lifters have, especially uh, beginners. Again, the shoulders are objectively a larger muscle group, and they're probably going to have the largest overall impact on your upper body appearance, especially in combination with a well-developed upper back. Uh, proper chest training is obviously still important, just like training every muscle group is, but the point here is to not unnecessarily overemphasize your chest and then treat your shoulders as a secondary muscle um, or as an afterthought or to think of them as a small muscle group like a lot of people do. Now, uh, in terms of exercise selection, what are the best exercises for building the shoulders? Uh, there are three main exercises that I would recommend and then two optional add-ons that you can include depending on your individual needs. So the first and most obvious one is gonna be a basic overhead press. Uh, this will primarily train the anterior head of the shoulder, which is the front. Um, it'll hit the lateral head to some extent as well, um, which is the side, especially depending on which overhead press variation you use. Um, it also involves the upper clavicular head of the pecs, uh, the triceps, the traps as well. And this is basically the uh, sort of bread and butter staple shoulder movement that has the largest capacity for progressive overload in terms of weight increases. Now there are several different options here. You can do a basic standing overhead barbell press or a seated overhead dumbbell press, um, or you could do a seated overhead barbell press or a standing overhead dumbbell press. Any of those are uh, ultimately acceptable. I've personally always favored the seated overhead dumbbell press that always just felt 
the smoothest and the most natural for me, but you can test out each variation and see which one feels best for you. And if your goals are strictly hypertrophy related, okay, you're not trying to uh, hit some specific overhead pressing number as a personal goal, then there's also nothing technically wrong with using cables or machines if you prefer that for some reason. And then lastly, uh, the Arnold press is another variation that you can test out, which involves a bit more lateral head and allows you to train that overhead pressing movement while using less total weight. Now, as long as you're doing an overhead pressing variation of some kind in your program, and you're doing basic pressing movements for your chest as well, like I'm sure everybody is, that's gonna be more than enough to fully stimulate the front head of your shoulder in most cases. And so, uh, unless for some unlikely reason you have underdeveloped front delts, there's usually no need to include front raises in your program since the anterior head of the shoulder is already getting hammered from all of your chest and shoulder presses. Uh, front raises aren't necessarily gonna hurt you, but they're just a waste of time and effort in most cases. All right, the second shoulder exercise on the list is going to be a lateral raise. And the primary goal here, of course, is to target the lateral head or the side delt. Um, this this head is the most important for creating that round 3D delt look and overhead presses alone are not going to be enough to fully stimulate it. So um, this is a case where isolation movements really do play an important role. Uh, lateral raises can be done in a wide variety of ways using dumbbells, cables, a lateral raise machine if your gym has one. Um, you can even do them with resistance bands. And as long as you're using proper form and technique, I would say that any one of those variations are ultimately acceptable. Uh, I personally like the standing single arm cable lateral raise or an incline bench dumbbell lateral raise. Those are just uh, my personal favorites. The benefit of the cable variation is that the lateral delt gets put under stress through a slightly larger range of motion in comparison to dumbbells since there's active tension at both the top and bottom end of the range, whereas with dumbbells, they lose the tension in the bottom because of the uh, direction that the force of gravity is pulling. And what I like about the incline bench variation is how the torso is locked in place at a set angle, and so it prevents you from cheating and it lets you really just focus in on the side delts and standardize every rep. Uh, but these are just two options out of many, many different options since uh, there are just so many different ways that lateral raises can be performed. Now, with any lateral raise variation that you do, to maximize the stress on the side delt, make sure to incorporate a very slight forward lean because that'll shift the line of pull more directly onto the middle area of the shoulder that you're trying to target. And this is a movement where I would say that the mind-muscle connection does become more important, so play around with different angles and hand positions to find the one that activates the lateral head of your shoulder most strongly for you. Definitely don't go too heavy here. That's just gonna cause other muscles to jump in and take over, and it's also going to stress your shoulder joint as well. So I would say bare minimum eight reps per set and probably a bit higher, more like 10 to 12 is what I would go with. And just progress very slowly and gradually on these over time while maintaining solid form. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button below to let me know. I really appreciate the support. And the third exercise on the list is going to be a face pull. So this is a great movement that hits both the side and the rear delts plus the upper back and it's great for improving overall shoulder health as well. Um, there are a lot of different face pull variations that are available. You can pull from high to low, low to high, you can pull straight across cross, um, there's different grips, you can use a cable or a resistance band, uh, but this is how I would personally recommend doing them. You're going to set the pulley to upper chest height, grab onto a rope attachment, and hold the rope from underneath with a neutral hammer grip. Keep your chest up, and then pull the rope back to your face, retract your shoulder blades, and also imagine that you're trying to pull the rope apart as well. And a good way to think about this is that you're trying to hit a back double biceps pose on each rep. And then as you bring the weight forward, also let your scapula protract forward slightly as well. Okay, don't keep your shoulder blades pinched back the entire time. As you move forward, let the scapula relax and then retract it as you pull the rope back. And as you progress to heavier resistance on these, if the weight stack is heavy enough that it's pulling your entire body forward and you're losing leverage because of that, then what you can do is just put a box or bench on the floor right up against the cable machine and then stand with one leg pressing into it. But just like with lateral raises, this is a movement that you wanna use moderate weights on for slightly higher reps. Uh, 10 to 12 is a good range. You can go even higher if you want and focus more on control and technique. Okay, this isn't a movement that you want to just load up a bunch of weight and get super explosive with. So those three exercises, an overhead press, a lateral raise, and a face pull in combination with all of your chest presses, which will uh, hit the front delts, and then also in combination with all of your pulling movements for back, which will hit the rear delts, that should be enough for most people to achieve very solid shoulder development. But if you want to expand things a bit further and really hammer your delts even harder, either because they're a weaker area or they're just something that you really want to focus on, then two other optional add-ons would be a rear lateral raise, which will hone in more on the rear delts, 
um, and it will involve a bit of lateral head as well. And then there's also an upright row, which will hit the lateral head and also the upper traps. So for the rear lateral raise, you can either do this from a bent over position using dumbbells or a cable. Um, I definitely prefer cables for this movement because the dumbbell variation just has an awkward resistance curve where it's really easy at the bottom, but then gets very, very hard at the top. Um, but if dumbbells are all that's available to you, then ultimately that's still okay. Um, you can also do this from a standing position using a cable machine like you see here, or my personal favorite, which is the reverse pec deck, because this version puts maximum tension on the rear delts at all points throughout the range of motion. And then lastly, for upright rows, I'd recommend doing this using either a pair of dumbbells or two cable attachments like you see here, or my personal favorite, which is a rope attachment. Um, I find that by standing a couple steps back from the machine and just pulling the rope up until my hands touch my lower chest, that hits the lateral head really hard as well as the traps without any shoulder or wrist discomfort at all, um, which you're more likely to get when you're using a straight barbell. And the key thing here is to make sure that you're only pulling the weight up until your elbows are at shoulder height and no higher. If you pull the weight all the way up uh, to your neck like most people do, that's gonna put a lot of stress on the shoulder joints over time. Now, some people might be totally fine with that, but for the majority of people, that shorter range of motion is going to be better. And also make sure that you're keeping the weights moderate here and that you're doing this movement under strict control. And if you do experience any shoulder discomfort, then you'll probably be best off to just skip this movement altogether. So unlike what most people think, this is actually the largest muscle group on your upper body in terms of total volume. I also think it's the most important muscle for giving you that strong aesthetic look. And those are my top recommended movements when it comes to building it. Don't neglect your shoulder training. Don't treat your delts as an afterthought at the expense of a million sets of bench presses and flies. And make sure that your exercise selection and form is dialed in so that you can build your shoulders with maximum effectiveness. If you found this helpful and you wanna get a fully structured training plan, not just for your shoulders, but so that you can maximize muscular development from head to toe, make sure to visit seannell.com custom. Fill out the short form there and I'll send you back a free step-by-step -step program that you can follow based on your current condition, your goals, and your experience level. And that includes not just a workout plan, but a nutrition plan as well. You can click up here for that or use the link in the description box below. On the supplementation side of things, if you wanna add into your program, what I would confidently say are the best formulated products available when it comes to a pre-workout multivitamin and fish oil, then make sure to visit realscienceathletics.com. This is my own sports nutrition line that I created from scratch to fully optimize your results without all the regular supplement hype and BS that you find everywhere else. And you can use discount code YouTube15 to save 15% off your first order. Here's two more videos that I'd recommend watching now. You can follow me over on Instagram for more tips and updates. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you wanna see next, and I will see you again in a few days.